Hi, in this video we'll get a 27 MHz radio controller crystal to oscillate on a circuit that we're going to build on a breadboard. When I started building this I didn't find any easy to digest practical information on how to do this, especially when we're talking about with these overtone crystals. I'm going to share with you a circuit that worked for me and some tips on making it work that I learned along the way. If you can do this, you are amazingly close to being able to build your own one of these. Here's a working example. Right, so let's start. I bought the crystal from JCAR Electronics. This is the website here. You can get them though online too. I've checked on eBay and there's similar things available. JCAR actually did provide a data sheet which I've downloaded. This is the data sheet. It's got some interesting things like the frequency of the crystal, the type of holder it has. Probably importantly it's got the load capacitance and it's got a few other bits and pieces about it. There's also a, a diagram of a crystal, but there is no sample circuit to use. That's it. To move forward, I took the Colpitz oscillator circuit that we built in a previous video and just started tweaking all the component values. Out of all of them, the fussiest one was actually this resistor R3. So what I had going on there was this 0 to 20k uh, trimmer pot sort of sitting in there and just was tweaking that up and down until we could get something to oscillate. Once I had working component values, I did find I was having an unreliable startup, and I think one of the factors there was that the pins on these crystals are actually quite wide for a breadboard, and I'd inserted it in and out a few times, and you can actually see here where I had done that. And now if I put the crystal in, even when it's in all the way, it's still really quite loose. So a key thing is pick your spot, put the crystal in, and don't insert it lots of times. You may damage your breadboard, I think, it's just these are too big. I think that seems to improve reliability a lot is to make all of the, the transistor and the capacitors and crystal be all nice and close to each other. Where the biasing resistors for the transistor is doesn't really matter so much. So here we have our circuit fully assembled. We've got 5 volts power coming in. Um, our biasing resistors, the transistor capacitors and a crystal all kept nice and close to each other and our emitter resistance is these two resistors in series going back to ground and if we were to power this all up um, good news is we're getting it to oscillate which is great but what is going on here we're getting 9 megahertz and we're expecting 27 and this all comes back to something in the spec here where it says vibration mode 3 O slash T which means overtone mode so we need this uh, crystal, which is now vibrating its natural frequency of 9 MHz. We need it to go on the third overtone to get to the 27.095. And that means we're going to have to modify the circuit a little bit more. The way we're going to get the crystal to oscillate on the overtone is we're going to add another capacitor here. And we're going to add ourselves an inductor here. And the values that we're going to use for this is 330 nanofarad and 4.7 microhenry. The correct value for this capacitor and, and inductor you could calculate, but basically what I did is I just took the 330 nanofarad capacitor and then tried a whole series of different inductors. Here's the circuit running. I've added the capacitor here and watch what happens when on the inductor's already on ground, but watch what happens when I join it in so it's included in the circuit. And now we can see we've got our 27 megahertz out of the crystal because it's running on the overtone. So that's how you get an overtone crystal to oscillate on its overtone.